down, you crazy chicken ladies. I was on my way over here, and I saw the crowd pouring out of the tent. I said, this is not my tent. This must be Joel Salatin's tent. Am I in the right place? Or Joel, Joel will come walking up ready to speak here in a second. Oh, well. I guess we're opening for him. No. I cannot believe how many crazy chicken ladies there are to come and, and come to a talk when it's 90 degrees outside. And not only that, to pile up outside the tent in the sun. So there are, I was hoping to say there are a few seats in here, but there are no seats. Maybe. There's two seats there. Y'all squeeze in. Okay, we're, you know what? Let's play a little game. Y'all hear it? Okay. I'm, I'm standing up. We're going to have you join me here in a second. Some of you people in the back are standing up. Uh, if, you come to a, if you come to a chicken talk in Tennessee when it's 90 degrees outside, you might be a crazy chicken lady. So everybody step up. Stand up. Stand up if you might be a crazy chicken lady. That's everybody here if you don't know because you're, you're here at this talk. Okay? We're going to find out who's the ultimate. This is the chicken talk, right? Okay, we're going to find out who's the craziest chicken lady. Guys, you can participate. I'm standing. Okay. Do you have or want chickens? Stay standing. You might be a crazy chicken lady. If you have a chicken sort of catalog in your house, McMurray Hatchery, Premier One, something like that, you might be a crazy chicken lady. Everybody still standing? We didn't lose anybody? Oh, oh, we lost a few people. We lost a few people. It's going to get harder. It's going to get harder. You ready? Have you ever named a chicken? If you've named a chicken, stay standing. Okay, we lost a few. We're getting a little more giggles with that one. Oh, some of you have not named a chicken. You ruthless, primal beasts. Okay. Uh, oh, have you ever talked to a chicken? You, she's like, oh, you might be a crazy. We didn't lose anybody. Oh, you. Uh-oh, it's getting hard. I, I, I swear I'm going to beat you all, and I'm going to be the ultimate crazy chicken lady before it's over. We'll see. Okay. Here we go. We're going to lose a few. If you have a piece of clothing featuring a chicken, you might be a crazy chicken lady. <laughs> Woo, she says. Anybody wearing a piece of cloth? And yes, a notebook counts. Oh, we lie. Oh, look, he stands up proud. <laughs> well, you, well, you stand up. You're, you're, you might be a crazy chicken lady. I won't ask. Well, if you have a rooster with a machine gun on your shirt, you might. No, we'd lose too many with that one, wouldn't we? You might be. The, okay. Um, what else we got? Oh, here's a good one. If you have more than 12 chickens per person of your household, you might be a crazy chicken lady. Oh, I'm staying strong. Chicks count. She's like, oh, yeah, what's up, y'all? I got 150 chickens in my living room. What's next? Okay. We're all standing down. We're, we, what? Oh, yeah, meat birds count. That's why I'm still standing here. I got 100 downstairs. Okay. Y'all know Jess from Roots and Refuge? Woo! She came out to the farm. I was the reigning crazy chicken lady until Jess came out to the farm, and we let out the chickens, and she had this little song for the chickens. She sang to the chickens. And not to be outdone, because I knew this competition was coming, I, I sang to my chickens. I'm not a, I don't know what to sing, so I'm singing happy birthday. If you've ever sang to your chickens... You might be a crazy chicken lady. Stay standing. Did we leave the machine? Did we leave? We lost the machine gun. We lost the rooster with the machine. Anybody still standing? Oh, she's proud. Okay, we got a few still standing. Okay. Have you ever had your chickens in your house? <laughs> Can I stand back up, she says. And then... Uh, and. I should say, well, have you ever had your chickens for dinner? Yeah. Well, I, you could look at that two ways. Like, for dinner, like, eat them. But you could, Rebecca and I have actually took a chicken, our first Kickstarter, Permaculture Chickens, we brought some chickens in. 
and, and let them eat with us. We might be the crazy chicken lady. Okay, have you ever drove, your, drove chickens more than 100 miles? Oh, we got anybody left? Oh, we do. We got somebody still standing. Okay, here's the biggie. Here's the biggie. You ready? We've got two, two ladies standing. Have you ever lived with your chickens inside their coop and run for 24 hours without leaving? Oh, I am the ultimate crazy chicken lady. Woo! Okay, beat that. He said, why? He said, well, I don't know. That's what makes it even worse if you don't even know why. Okay, so why are we going to get chickens? Speaking of why, all right. Why are we going to get chickens? Well, we're going to get them for their eggs. No, duh. But if y'all are just start meat, he says, good. He's jumping ahead. The, um, I can remember the very first time, for those of you who haven't gotten this, just wait. You're just going to experience one of the greatest joys in life when uh, you, you first get chicks and then you realize, okay, they're not going to lay eggs until they're six months. Sometimes it can be 10 months old and you're so excited. You go out there and you check and you check and check. And like, it's like when your wife's pregnant and you think this baby's never going to come. Uh, well, one day you go out there and, well, you sort of give up. I gave, I gave up. These eggs are never going to come. Well, one day I went out there, and there's a whole, what do you call it, clutch of eggs, and I celebrated. I ran inside, told Rebecca, jump up and down. We, we got eggs. Where are they? Oh, they're, they're back. It does help to pick up the eggs and take them in the house. <laughs> and, and I think it must have been three in the afternoon, and those eggs, don't be, don't be afraid. They're little tiny eggs at first. And we, we, I went back out and got the eggs, brought them in, and we're cracking these little eggs over the, uh, the cast iron, and we're having us a little, little tiny quail-sized egg snack that afternoon. That's a joy. And, you know, the, um, spectacular taste? I don't know. I, I was at an event once, and uh, Morgan Gold, Goldshaw Farm, did a blindfold taste test. He got some like janky grocery store, cheap of the cheapest eggs, and then he got some local, uh, somebody who raised them at that event, and he put blindfolds on us and had us taste those eggs, and even the apron wearing permaculture chicken ninja master failed. I, I actually couldn't pick out the right eggs. She's like, no, I'm crazy chicken lady. You think you're the crazy chicken lady? You can't even tell between store-bought eggs. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is it wasn't necessarily the test, taste that set that apart that day. It was the labor, the working, the waiting, the getting the chicks, protecting those chicks. Everybody wants to be, eat a chicken. We just got to beat them to it. Well, I, be, I beat them to it that day, and it was a big celebration. We had us a nice little afternoon snack. All right. Somebody already said meat. You get chickens for meat. Now, I will warn some of you if, you, if you get those layer chickens and you end up maybe hatching some and they have all kinds of little chicks and some are, some are males and you just get these regular, normal layer chicks, barred rocks, uh, black astralorps or something like that, and you go to harvest these guys at 16 weeks or the mamas when they're older, you're getting ready to eat what looks like a toy rubber chicken. <laughs> so... Don't be too disappointed. They are going to be full of flavor, uh, but do be warned. When you grow your own food, it's not always as beautiful as the store. In fact, when, when we go out there and we see a hole in our collards or our kale, God forbid, that kills for Rebecca, uh, there's hole in it. I'm like, that's the, my seal of approval. That's my organic seal. If it's safe enough for the bugs, it's safe enough for me. And uh, it's good stuff. So embrace the ugly. Get ready. You're going to grow some ugly stuff. And if you sell it, you'll find out that you, you, you pick out all the pretty stuff and sell it, and you're stuck with all the uglies. <laughs> that wasn't even in the notes. That was a little bonus there for you. <laughs> Hope I don't get too distracted. What, how much time do I have? An hour. An hour. Okay. As much as they want, I think, she said. Thank you. Oh, you guys are forgetting. So work in meat. Okay, so I should say meat, Cornish cross. You guys know I raised the corn. Perhaps you know there's a breed called Cornish cross. 
I have ended up calling that breed sea, sea monsters, sea. Uh, not for like sea monster, like out in the ocean, like Loch Ness. I'm talking about C, C for cornice, C for cross. They're like the chainsaws of the livestock world. They are so efficient. And I called them sea monsters, monsters because they grow so fast. You guys could today, you could go to McMurray Hatchery here. I think they're out more on the other side. Order you some sea monsters. And as soon as they get to you, in just two months, say you raised 100 like we do, and... You raise them from the beginning, say 100 make it. So maybe you ordered 125 so that you have 100, 100 at the end. In just eight weeks' time, if those things are four to five pounds each, do you realize what's happening? That's four or 500 pounds of meat in your freezer in just two months. Okay, to give you perspective, it, ta- it would take one steer, one and a quarter of a steer, like a, a beef cow, two years to get to that weight in your freezer. It would take two pigs, 10 months. That's your comparison there. And, it's, and, 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 and the, the sea monster isn't going to kill you. It isn't going to accidentally run over your children. Okay? Now, now, if you lay down in there for too long, they might. They start with your earlobe. How do I know this? Well, remember, I, stay, I live with the chickens for 24 hours. In fact... I, I did not leave the run. People could come in and visit me and bring me food, but I could not leave. And we agreed. I'm pointing to my wife over there. Eight o'clock, whatever it was. I forget if it was nine o'clock. I started at eight o'clock in the morning, ended at eight o'clock in the morning. And I'm usually the one that wakes everybody up. And I tell Rebecca, you got to get everybody up and come get me out. Like, I want to conclude this on film. Like, if you're going to live with chicken, just so you know, if you try to beat me and become the ultimate crazy chicken lady, and you're going to live with them for 24 hours, stuff like that works better with a camera. So I had to get everybody back out there. So I'm sitting, so even though it was officially over, I could wait on them. But 7.45 came, I'm getting excited. I'm actually sitting in this chair. I'm tired, and these chickens are kind of swarming. You know, they're meat eaters, chickens. You know that? They're like dinos with feathers, pigs with feathers. They'll eat some meat. If you see vegetarian fed eggs, that's not something to be proud of, okay? (laughs) Chickens, if you give them a chance, will eat your earlobe and make more beautiful oranges eggs you've ever seen, okay? So where was I going with that? Oh, um, they're they're, they're swarming around me, And, and, and I'm trying to stay focused because you don't want to fall asleep amongst the chickens, because they are working. They don't ever stop. That's what we're going to get to this, how hard they work. So I'm, I'm there, and Re- so 8 o'clock comes. I don't see Rebecca. I don't see a sign. I don't see a kid's. 8.15. Chickens are starting to peck my toes. 8.30. Okay. I got to summon the energies. I'm standing just like this, looking at the house. Come. Come out. Come out. <laughs> Finally. What time did you come out? It was like 7. Okay, I might have been dramatic. You know, the truth, <laughs> the truth ruins a good story. My fact checker over here ruined the jokes. Huh? I should. Okay. Okay, she woke up at 7.30. They were supposed to get me out at 5. Okay. See? No, it's... it's <laughs> I'm sorry. It's one of those. It's going to take me a minute to forgive you. I guess I haven't. I'm out in her here on the stage. We're going to get a public confession. Okay. I am going to get to the point here. Okay, work. You can put the chickens to work. They are the hardest worker in the room. Somebody called me a chicken once. And I was proud of it. Because... They're the hardest worker in the room. I'll take that. They fertilize. You know, chicken squat is evil if it's on the sidewalk and misplaced. But place that chicken squat in where you want to garden in the future, in a yard you want to fertilize out in the pasture, it becomes holy chicken squat. Let's get it where, where it's go. They, they, they don't ever stop scratching, which you can use for tilling, and they don't ever stop pooping. I know this. I live for 24 hours. 
I followed their lead. We got a, we got a porta potty in there. We put our porta potty in there. That's how serious it was. I live with the chickens 24 hours. Okay, pets. Now, why are you getting chickens? So, we talked about eggs, meat, or work. Pets. Does anybody have a pet chicken? You might be a crazy chicken lady if you have at least one pet chicken. Now, one person was brave enough to hold up their hand. Um, on my way over here, my farm sitter, who's also my editor, Austin, he texted, no, it was before we left, Jonah and Josiah said, you know Austin uh, and his wife uh, had, spent the night, they put the pig in the bed with them and spent the night with their pet pig. They wanted it to be a dog pet. Anybody done that? Anybody want to admit to that? The crazy swine herd? You're the crazy swine herd? He's like, I'll admit it. He put a pig in the bed. Didn't work out. Uh, has anybody done that with a chicken? <laughs> Please tell me no. You might have me beat on that one. Okay, don't do that. So that's a pet. That's a pet. If you put the, if you put the animal in the bed, it's a pet. Uh, we do have one pet chicken. Its name, her name is Kai. Uh, one of the fans, one of the fans who watch our show, lost her husband. It was a tragic death, and she said, "Will you please name a chicken after my husband?" I said, "Well, first, okay, maybe." Uh, two caveats. One, that chicken could die at any moment. Is that okay? She's like, yep. She said, that's okay. I said, two, all we have is females. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So we got this guy chicken named Kai. And somehow that thing has lived six or seven years, although Rebecca's probably going to correct me. Wouldn't that be a funner story to say Kai lived six or seven years? What she's going to say is, no, we've had other chickens just like Kai come up, and we just keep having these guys. <laughs> That's probably the truth. She's like, yep. Just like uh, Sow the Land. Anybody watch Sow the Land? And Bernice? Hello, Bernice. That's the thing. Well, he's got about five Bernices. I hope I didn't out him right here. Because something happened. Remember what I said? Everybody wants to eat a chicken. Okay, so now, if you're growing a chicken, what did I say? Oh, yeah, so if you're growing it for a pet, you know, I get a lot of text sometimes in, in our member area, and I'll, they'll say, oh, what do I do? My chicken's this or that. And really, I don't necessarily know, because I just, the strong survive at our farm, and just every two years, every year or every two years, we just get replacement chicks, and they're just replaceable enough. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Just get more chicks every year. Okay, now, now that's going to help us if we know why we're doing it to know our goals. You're, 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 if, you're, if you're really growing to get the most amount of protein you can from your farm, you're going to grow sea monsters. If you're really wanting eggs, you're going to grow those egg layer chickens. You might do both if you want them both. If you want a pet, you're going to get those little fluffy things. What are those called? Silkies. Everybody, so we've got some proud silky people in here. Okay, uh, what did I say? Okay, so grow what you want. Don't grow something because it's cool. And don't, don't even grow, grow chickens if you think that's just something you have to do. Don't do it. If you don't like chicken meat and you don't like eggs, don't do it. You, you, you are in charge. I was with uh, somebody driving the other day, and we looked, and we were seeing all these abandoned gardens. And, he's, and I said, what's going on? And he said, those are COVID gardens. <laughs> Anybody want to admit to a COVID garden or a COVID goat? <laughs> <laughs> or you get a little panicked and get something, and, and now here we are in 2023, and you have some sense in your head about the goat, and it's gone? <laughs> Nobody wants to admit to that. Anybody want to admit to that? Okay, so COVID gardens. You know, did they really want it? You know, and maybe that was okay. Maybe if you grew a COVID garden because you felt your food was insecure, and so you were growing it for food security, and now you feel a little bit more secure, and you end it, that's Okay. It's okay, too, to one year really want to grow ducks. We went on a duck craze, and we wanted us some duck. We wanted to do duck tacos. And then every year, when it comes time to order the ducks, last year I said, Rebecca, are we into ducks still? And she's like, eh. And I'm like, that's how I feel. No more ducks. I was that way with turkeys, but the beautiful one, she wanted turkeys still. Um, okay. Who likes kale? Raise your hand if you like kale. If you dare to admit it. Okay. She's really waving it. 
okay? It's okay. Look how many people did it. Don't grow kale because it's cool. I got a t-shirt that says, kale no. <laughs> Just say it with me. Kale no. Embrace it. Uh, Rebecca's got one that says, kale yeah. And we're standing there next to each other. Uh-oh. They're upset. They like the kale. That's it. I'm done with him. Get out of here. Because they know where I'm going next. I'm going after their tomatoes next. So that's probably good. I'm probably safe. Who in here likes tomatoes? Oh, see? I should be very careful when I say this. I don't like tomatoes. I'm glad none of, I'm glad none of you have any tomatoes, because you'd be throwing them at me right now. Okay, uh-oh. Who likes goats? Who's going to admit it? Oh, maybe more than Kale. She's proud goater. We got some proud goaters in the house. Now, those of you who raise your hand, Jess Sourd's here somewhere, and she's a praying woman. And she once had goats and does not have them anymore. And she would be happy to pray for you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Go find Jess. Uh-oh, she's going to walk out on me? Don't walk out. Oh, we got, we lost one. Uh-oh, <laughs> passionate goater out the door. I'm going to get to the point. Just hang on. <laughs> okay. Who likes eggplant? Oh, my gosh. Okay, we got some eggplanters. Okay, well, Rebecca and I... We thought, you got to grow eggplant. It's this beautiful purple thing. Let's do it. Everybody's doing it. I don't know if everybody was doing it, but it was part of a seed packet or something. We planted that eggplant, and the animal, the, the butt, something, it just started disappearing, that plant. Just every day, a little bit less. And we're just kind of like, eh. And before we know it, it's just a little stem of the eggplant. And she's laughing. That's true, right? My fact checker, it's true. What was going on? Well, if we would be real with ourselves, we were growing it because it's cool, not because we liked it. So especially don't do that with a livestock, all right? Because you ain't going to go cover the kale when the frost is coming if you don't like it. I'm going to go out there to that kale and pick it and feed it to my chickens. <laughs> Turn that kale, that's nature's greatest miracle, turning kale into delicious chicken meat and eggs. Okay. Oh, we're finally getting to the point here. For those of you note takers, um, how many? How many chickens should you get? We'll start by how many do you want to eat? I mean, that sounds kind of obvious. How many do you want to eat in a week? Let's break it down to that. How many chickens? So a chicken is going to give you two to four eggs a week, depending on the time of year, depending on their age. So if you if just say three, oh boy, you're not supposed to do math in public. I really should have put this in my notes three, and you want a dozen a week, that'd be four? Rebecca, fact check? Okay, four chickens. So you could put them in my chicken tractor. That's just this little 50-inch by, by eight, eight foot chicken tractor and move four chickens around in your yard and you got a dozen eggs a week. You want two dozen a week? Get eight. Then open the door to the chicken tractor and put them in a premier net and move them around. You want to pay for this whole operation? Somebody got to pay for this. Then get 16 and sell the extra to pay for all the feed. Rebecca and I did that for years with everything, with, with, with beef, with, with chickens, with vegetables. We had no money. We had zero money. We were negative money. And, uh, but we, we were not going to let it stop us. We were going to still grow stuff. So instead of buying just one steer, which is all we needed for beef, we got two. And we called up our buddies and said, you guys want to go in on a steer? And got half the money up front. And then the other half right before we went to butchering. That was a bonus. That wasn't in the notes. Okay. Same thing with the meat chickens. Why, why at the time did we grow 100 meat chickens? Why did we want 100 meat chickens at the end of the day? Because that's what, let's say there's 50 weeks in the year. I know there's 52, but 50 weeks a year, that, that's two chickens a week. So how many meat chickens do you want to eat in a week? Two? Then you need 100. And, and in two months, you can put them all in your freezer. And you got two a week. So just do a little bit of math there, okay? Now, you do have to plan for failure. What's going to happen? People are going to die. Sometimes I call them people. If you call chickens people, <laughs> you might be a crazy chicken lady. Uh, some die. They die. Have you ever heard that? If you have livestock, you're going to have dead stock? It's so true. And sometimes you're going to not know what the heck killed them. Uh, sometimes it's going to be your fault. 
Sometimes it's going to be your kid's fault. Uh, some die. Some die in shipping. That's totally normal. You get an order from Mary Hatchery, you're going to have, you get 100, you're going to have one or two dead. Once we had 100, am I jumping ahead of myself? Uh, I'll just say it. Uh, once we had 100 dead upon arrival, all of them. Now, thankfully, McMurray Hatchery, in that case, can hold the postal service liable, and, and we end up getting more. But it happens, guys. There'll, there'll be people dying in the brooder, okay? They, for whatever reason. Uh, actually, and, and sometimes you won't know, and, 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 many, and most of the time, it's not your fault. And just relax and know it's part of the process. If you start getting more than 10% dying, and especially of what you think might be the same thing, then we might worry. Then we might talk to Mr. Google Pants. We might go see what Justin said on YouTube or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm not kidding you. A, a guy, uh, my greater guy, Andrew, he, he, he went on some meat chickens with us. We ordered 100. He ordered 50. And he called me before I came up here saying, what happened? Can you help me? Give me an idea. He bought 50. 24 were dead. He had some sort of uh, construction something going on or was it big lightning storm and and he suspects that all the chickens jumped into a corner and just suffocated and crushed each other and I was kind of with him on that one it sounds like it now if any more die you might got something going through it and we'll and we'll adjust it but who knows I remember getting one some little chicks one time and I was so proud I built this little brooder outside they're going to be on the grass and uh, I put them in there, these little tiny things. And I came back out and checked on them in the afternoon. And I lift this up and, whoa! It's like this black cord. It's like this black electrical cord on the ground, but only about that thick and six inches long. You know what I'm talking about? A black snake, and it was extra thick right in the middle, had swallowed nine of them. You could still see them squirming in there. Remember what I said? Everybody wants to eat a chicken? We just got to beat them to it. So I ended up having to move, you know, I love those chickens enough, certainly more than eggplant. I moved those chickens inside to the garage. That's a trick. Didn't, and Joel Sawathan helped me with this trick for protecting, and this is a bonus, not in the notes. If you want to protect your little chicks, you either got to keep them moving. So a, a, if you want to keep them outdoors, that, 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 that needs to be mobile. And I'm working on a, I should one day work on a brooder shawl. And then, um, or it just needs to be a mighty fortress, Okay. That's why we end up building a bulletproof brooder because I might be jumping ahead of myself, but I'll go ahead and tell you. One day, Josiah goes down there to take care of those little chicks, and he opens the door, and there's this rat just smiling at him. Not a little mouse, a big rat, just smiling, blood on his teeth. Every one of those hundred chicks was dead and not even eaten. These guys are doing it for sport. That was a mood kill, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, it was maybe a mistake. How am I going to get you to laugh after that one? Oh, let's just go down the mood kill route. <laughs> Kids will step on them. Guts will come out. <laughs> Kids will step on them. You'll step on them. It's okay. Something's going to die whether you're growing them or somebody else, and it's a much worse situation for the else situation. Your chickens, even though some people are going to die, even if it's on accident, even if, even if it's a dumb mistake, even if you don't know what the heck happened, at least they aren't in this confined building, cramped four to square foot. Okay, they're out, they're breathing, they're fresh air. They, they got a wonderful life, and you're going to lose some, and that's okay. And it's okay for you to be sad. It's okay for you to take the hit. If you're a meat eater, you need to take the hit. You're responsible. You're taking that life ultimately. So you, it's okay to feel some sadness over some of the sacrifice that has to happen to get that food on your plate. Otherwise, you're just completely disconnected to it. I insist on harvesting uh, the animals on, on our farm and doing it myself because I need to feel that pain and the weight of that sacrifice. And it's okay to be sad. Uh, okay, so what kind should you get? I vote for the classics, like the if you're wanting to get layer eggs. We already talked about what to get for meat birds. Um, meat birds is Cornish cross. Uh, classics. What are the classic egg layers? The barred Plymouth Rock, the black oyster lorp, the what's the yellow one, Rebecca? Orpington, Buff Orpington. 
Uh, I like the black stars, the red stars. These are hybrid breeds that are just really made to crank, made to crank out the eggs. They don't weigh much, they don't eat so much, and they really lay out the eggs. Uh, Delawares are a blue, beautiful white bird. And these, are, these birds I listed are the birds that poop and work and lay eggs, and then you can harvest them when they're old ladies and not doing that anymore. Rebecca, on the other hand, likes an Easter egg basket. <laughs> Ladies, anybody like an Easter egg basket of eggs? That means you get a green one, you get a blue one, a brown one, a white one, pink one, huh? Dark brown, there's no pink ones, so you'll know. Oh, what? What'd you say? Okay, so tell me then, Rebecca, what kind of chickens are those? Americana. Are you saying the name of a chicken? Okay, say it real loud. I'm just speaking Salmon Favreau. Salmon Favreau. Oh, they do have some pink ones. Oh, Lord have mercy, she's saying she's going to get them. Before we know it, we're going to have that black chicken. Y'all seen that with the black comb and everything? We're going to go to the twilight zone. Okay. Uh, well, what else? What else? Ginger, are you here? Ginger McMurray Hatcher, are you here? Okay. So, so here's what you, white? So who does the white ones? The leghorn. They're not going to be very big, so maybe if you also want to eat them, you don't go that route, but they will, they will lay some eggs, the leghorn. The Delawares are white, and they'll lay, oh, their, their eggs are white, yeah. Okay, so gentlemen, you see what's happening here? I want the red stars, I want the black stars. We ended up with an Easter egg basket. <laughs> a fella came up to me at the last event, and he said, Justin, oh, he had been married 40 years. I said, hey, man, what's the secret? You know what he told me? He said, two words. Two words is the secret to a 40-year marriage. Guys, you listening to this? Ladies, too, I guess. Well, guys, okay. I said, yeah, I know. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, nah, close. If you do the first one, you don't need the second one. You know what the two words are? Yes, dear. Some of the guys are <laughs> nodding their head. Other guys are like, now I'm going to be held accountable to this. Thanks, Justin. Okay. So get what the lady wants. That's called the garden of peace. Gentlemen, we're just going to first cultivate the garden of peace. Yes, dear. If she ain't happy, nobody happy. Remember that old saying? It's true. She's like, oh, yes, it's true. What? He's completely true. Amen, brother, he's saying. Okay, where do you get them? Mick Murray Hatchery. They're way down at the end uh, in this brown, coo or brown uh, pergola, lights on it. Uh, talk to Ginger there. She'll take care of you. I said, and, and we've been getting chickens from them for years. Great customer service and good chickens. We're happy with them. When do you start? I'm going to tell you how to start. And somebody said, what's your number one advice for meat chickens? I just said that as they were going through to meet us earlier today. I say pull the Paul Greaves card. Paul Greaves, who, who, who's, who was out in California, nothing. He knew nothing. This wasn't even on his radar, growing food. They were watching the Super Bowl together, him and his family, big family party, out in like San Diego, California, of all places. Not so we got somebody to admit it? Okay. Woo! Okay. We, we, he's out there in San Diego, California. They're watching the Super Bowl. Somebody out of nowhere, one of these brothers or sisters said, we ought to get chickens. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? We might. We ought to get. That would be kind of neat. We ought to get some chickens. You know, and then the Super Bowl commercial comes on. They all enjoying that and the halftime show, and they all forgot. Well, then the halftime show. Well, you know, they all kind of forgot about it except for one guy. He goes in at the halftime show. He snuck off and looked at the computer and looked some things up. And before you know it, he's ordered some chicks. He comes back in. It's, it, you know, everybody's watching the show. Gets the third quarter, between third and fourth quarter. He's like, I ordered some chicks. What? What? We don't know what we're doing. We were just talking. What's going on? And then he said, yeah. And they're going to be here in two weeks. They knew nothing. They had not a garden, nothing. 
That's how you start. <laughs> hey, I'm going to give you a little more grace because I think I, I, texted, I texted Ginger because ever since 2020, you know, everybody's got their COVID chickens. Everybody wants to get them a chicken now. It's cool now. All right. At first, it was like um, gardening was OK. Martha Stewart had a garden. Oprah had a garden. It was socially acceptable. You could put a garden in an HOA. Chickens, you look crazy. Remember the crazy chicken line? So where was I going with that? So the guy, where was I going with that? What? Oh, that's right. When to start. So I asked Ginger. Do, okay, so Ginger's been slammed because of all the demand for the, for the chickens. Do you actually have chickens? I'm going to shout you out on stage, and I'm going to dare all these people to pull a Paul Greaves. Go to McMurray Hatchery and order your chickens. You're stuck in analysis paralysis. You're stuck in just wanting. The best way, the, the, the best advice I can give you is go ahead and order them. Okay, I'm giving you a little mercy here. I think it's like, uh, I was going to say June, but isn't it June now? Okay, end of June. So you got a little time. You might have, with shipping, four or five weeks. So go order some chicks. You know what that's going to do? Well, you got a date on it now. You, you got to quit putting it off. And you got to get ready. you got to set up a brooder. you got to figure out what they're going to eat. And you'll find it's really not that hard. If Paul Greaves can pull it off in San Diego, you can pull it off in Kentucky and Tennessee and Ohio, wherever you're from. Now, we, um, if, uh, that's, that's getting you started. Now, let's talk about the stages of, of raising chickens. So we got the brooder set up. I only got 20 minutes. I'm going to speed this up. Brooder set up. Um, how much space do they need? You need four, you need one square foot per four chicken, chicks. And you know, you guys are going to viciously take notes here. You can, uh, all this is in my book, The Rooted Life. Um, you want to put bedding in there, in their, in their place. And you guys can get a tote. You can get a rubber tote uh, to put them in. You can build a box in the barn. Premier, Premier One makes a, a, a brooding uh, hoop you can put up. Uh, you want to then put bedding. I like Detractor Supply fine pine shavings for their bedding. You want three, four, up to eight inches of deep bedding in there. And what you do is every day you, sp you add a little more bedding. It just absorbs their manure. Uh, you you got to get them a little feed, a little water. You're probably just getting a dozen, two dozen chickens. Just get them a little court. There's these court waters uh, that you can get. Uh, there's these little court feeders. You, you put the feed in the jar. You put the, feed, the water in the jar, and it's these little plastic containers at the bottom of them. That, just look it up. Just, just ask Mr. Google Pants for the court water, the, the court feeder. Um, you know, this would have been fun if I remembered what in the heck I'm talking about. My notes here are example, crazy inside. <laughs> Maybe it was that time we got... We, we got the totes, uh, we got these little totes or even, even the tractor supply trough and we raised our birds inside. Maybe you're supposed to remember the crazy chicken lady there, right? Embrace your crazy. Embrace your inner chicken lady and get your, put, your, put your birds inside if you know where, where else not to put them. All right? Now, we're going to make a critical step here because until now, we haven't become a chicken person yet if we haven't started. But we lack a cool name for that. You know, I'm looking around and I'm thinking, you know, uh, 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 a pig person, well, what are they? Well, no, a sheep. A sheep, who, who, somebody's, what, what's somebody who keeps a sheep? They're a shepherd or a rancher, okay? What's a pig guy? A swine herd, that's a cool name for a pig guy, even a pig guy. Uh, Dog? What, what's somebody who keeps a dog? A master. Okay? What's like somebody who tends cows? A cowboy. Or a rancher. We're just getting better and better. And what's a goat? What's somebody who keeps a goat? A goater? They got, they got a name. But what about a chicken? I talked... A chicken feather? Oh, oh a chicken... Yep. Uh, so you, so you, that's what I was going to say, because you could go to search Mr. Google Pants, and you know what the official name for a chicken person is? A poulterer. <laughs> no way. We're not, I'm not going away from this telling you guys you're going to be a poulterer. Uh, a flockster? Nah. A bird man? That's good. Uh, not bad. Bird man. Crazy chicken lady? That's crazy. 
Somebody named it. Somebody nailed it. You know what you guys are? You're chicken tenders. All right. We're about to cross into the threshold and become chicken tenders. Let's do it. So the chicks arrive. Put it on your, put it on your calendar. Be ready to get them a day early or a day late. The U.S. Postal Service is going to call you, you know, prompt and steady like they are, either at 4.30 in the morning or 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> and you won't know until they call and you'll hear those little chick. Hopefully you'll hear chicks in the background chirping. And uh, <clears throat> you would have, you, you, they call, you go ahead and set your, bro- your, you've already set your brooder up, hopefully. Now you go down there and you turn on the heat and then you go get them. As uh, soon as you come home, set them in. We, we, we liked, there's their water. We like to dip their beaks in the water and then put them under the warmth. Their first priority is to stay warm. It's not to eat or to drink. It's to stay warm. So we dip their water so they know and they're associated. They've never eaten or drinking yet. They're living off of whatever they had inside that egg. Okay? Now, the first three weeks, we're going to keep them inside that brooder. We, we need heat. Like I said, it's their first priority. Now, maybe, so, so I like the Premier One. They have these hover brooders because you can do heat lamps. Do be careful. Do create some a, a, a redundancy there with safety. Tie them up really good. Uh, pin them, whatever you got to do. We have three measures of ways to keep our heat lamp up out of the brooder because I've heard too many stories of this heat lamp falling in and not just killing the chickens, but burning the house down. So we like these heat plates that mimic some other hen. We put these heat plates on. It's just this hovering heat, and the chicks can go under there, and they stay warm. So then we, we've got the deep bedding. And why do I do that deep bedding? Well, Joel Salatin, what did he call it? He called it carbonaceous diaper. we got to absorb that manure, okay? And that's what helps us. we got that deep bedding down. I like to use a feed trap. So if you just put your feed and water straight up on those shavings, the chickens will track it. Remember, they scratch, they'll, they'll pour it in there. I build this little feed trough. It's this little wooden uh, frame with a one and a half inch wire mesh over it. And then I put the feed and the water on top of that. And the chickens got to get on top of that. And any dirt or debris or shavings fall off before it gets to the water. It helps a lot. It was, it's not perfect. You're still going to have some dirty water. You want to clean it out once or twice a day. And uh, just remember to check your coop of everything. Uh, I had notes to talk about the rat killer, but you guys remember that? Remember Josiah goes down there and finds this rat has killed all 100? Protect it. Ours is down in the, uh, the bottom stall of one of our, we, we, we live in a horse barn, and so we have stalls downstairs. And uh, we, we had to put one inch, one half inch wire mesh everywhere around that coop. So rats, snakes couldn't get in there. On the bottom of it, we have tin Okay, we have uh, storm doors to get through. That thing is just bulletproof. Uh, If you're doing it inside, hopefully, if you have rats this big inside, you got other problems. (laughs) You might be the crazy chicken lady and might not have your priorities straight. Okay, three to three to six weeks. What do you do? Well. If you have a lot of predator pressure, if you're gone to work from 9 to 5, if it's cold and rainy, you might keep them in there a bit a little longer uh, at the three-week mark. You can put them outside, especially if it's this hot, uh, but you could, you could put them out or, or you could keep them in there. We're, we're doing that with some of ours right now, just get, letting them get a little bit bigger, a little more to defend themselves, especially our turkeys. Uh, we found that if you have something like the chicken tractor, Uh, This is a design I have where it's a 50 inch by eight foot by by two feet tall. And you can put layer chickens in there. But what we've used it for this year is to a nursery. We've graduated the chicks from the brooder into this chick attractor. So nothing can get them from above. Crows love them a love them a chick. Crows will eat a chick. Did anybody know that? Crows also run the hawks off. Did anybody know that? So you kind of want the crows. You have to find this nice balance. You got to get the chicks old enough to where they can defend themselves. And the chicken tractor worked for that. We put 30 of them in there, and it was fine. They're little. Uh, another trick is a goose. Anybody got a guard goose? These are a lot of fun. You just get one. You you, you get a goose. You raise it with your chicks. They t- they they then um, you they the the poultry the the hatcheries have to send you two. But if you've only got one posse of chickens, give that other goose away or sell it. And 
or raise it up and then harvest one of them. Ultimately, you only want, you want to raise that goose with the chickens. And if you can, buy it sells with the chickens. Why? Because you want that goose to be fooled in thinking it's a chicken. And then it'll walk around like a proud chicken, proud tall chicken, looking around, look up in the sky. You should have seen that. You should see my goose when I get the drone out and fly. It's like, it's got one eye up in the air. That thing will flap. It'll squawk. It'll keep your chickens away. Uh, Do you get a, uh, okay, so then we tried with meat chickens once. We were getting our, the, the, the crows were getting them. We said, what do we do? We said, oh, we'll get a scarecrow. We put the scarecrow out there. Crows are smart. They figured out that scarecrow was nothing within three days. And we said, okay, we'll move that scarecrow with them. That bought us another three days. And then, you know, maybe by that time they were a little older or we just lost a few more or whatever. So at some point, the crows figure out there's grain there and they'll start eating the grain instead of the chickens. Uh, but you know what I did this year? I don't think the video's come out yet, but we're about to show you on the YouTube channel. Um, what's the new crow? You know, we, we lost some. We lost some of these little chicks. And even, even with the goose in there, what are we going to do? And I remembered at these used car lots. Have you guys ever seen that wild man? Wait, man. Okay? It's like 20 feet tall. And I thought, what is that? Maybe that'll work. And so I'm talking, imagine that conversation with Mr. Google Pants, trying to figure out what that's called. I think I put in used car waving man. It came up pretty quick. Mr. Google's pretty smart. It's the tube man. And I'm here to say I think the tube man might be the new scarecrow because we haven't lost one since. So just wait. You'll see it. That's fun. And it's fun. You got this little red guy just flopping around wild, and the the chicks are afraid of it at first, but they get used to it, and uh, we've protected them. You know, at first, Rebecca and I were like, oh, wait, it's like $140 or something. Stupid. What was it? 160. Yeah, that's better. Sometimes the truth is better <laughs> uh, for the story. So I was like, at first we were like, no, that's too much. Uh, but then we realized, wait, we just lost. We could have just lost 30 chickens to a crow. 30 times three, that's like 90 bucks we paid at the, the hatchery. And then, wait, if we lose 25 Cornish Cross every time with the sea monsters, and there were, you know, what are they worth? 25 bucks a piece, that's a, you, you saved your money the first year. So some, I, I only bring that up. Sometimes we can get caught up in this, this scarcity mindset of, oh, I got to pinch every penny instead of this abundance mindset of if, wait a minute, if I invest and go in on this 160, in the long run, I'm going to have $1,600 of savings or whatever. Okay. What do we do? Okay, so then by the time there's six weeks, they're out. They're out with everybody else. How do you introduce them to other chickens? You just put them in there at night. Everybody's dazed and confused. You put in some chicks. Everybody wakes up. Just think they had a bad dream. And there's, there's their new neighbor. And they've all accepting of each other. And then the, 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 the big mamas walk out. And then the big mamas come up at night. And it teaches the little ones how to do it. Uh, you only got two choices for raising them now. You're going to either put them on deep bedding. So if they're going to be in one spot, like in our front yard, we have chickens in a run, you need to put wood chips in there. You need to put wood shavings, grass clippings, leaf, something to absorb their manure. And what's cool is it not only absorbs their manure, but over time, us, once a year, once a year in the spring, we uh, go in and that, that deep bedding underneath it has turned into this rich compost. We didn't have to turn that compost. We didn't have to measure. We didn't have to do any work for it. Remember those chickens are tilling and it's getting some rain from the sky and then you put in that carbon, which is the wood chips, and then the chickens put in the nitrogen with their manure. Those are the four ingredients for a compost pile. Air, water, carbon, and nitrogen. So over time it happens. You just move some of the bedding aside and you just shovel up that compost and hopefully you got a garden nearby. If you have stationary chickens on deep bedding, hopefully you have a garden right there. And you can take your uh, compost over and uh, the chickens feed the garden. So your other cho- so that's the deep bedding. It absorbs it and then you get compost out of it. It's a no-brainer. And if you guys want a quick win and you go home to your chickens right now who are stuck in a run, not moving, just put in some deep bedding. That's a quick win. You're going to start absorbing that manure, and you're going to get some compost. The other option is to rotate them. 
So I would say at least once a week, move them. If, if you have enough big enough paddock, maybe 150 square foot per chicken. Uh, we, got our, we got our 30 chickens in the chick shawl 5.0 right now moving. And it's a, we probably use two and a half, three foot, or three 100 foot Premier One nets. And we just move that every week. Okay? Uh, if you're in the chicken tractor with three or four hens, you just move the chicken tractor once a day. If you're following the cows, like we've done on, on when we're in be better seasons, when my oldest son isn't uh, injured and, and, and it's not falling on Josiah, we'll move the, we'll move the, we move the cows every day no matter what. We move the sheep every day no matter what. Chickens, in our textbook operation, we'll move them every day behind the cows, three days behind the cows. Oh. So supplies for that... I mean, if you're putting them out in the pasture, a lot of times you can just throw their food on the ground. Well, how much does a chicken eat? One third pound of dry food a day per chicken. So three, three, one pound for, for, for every three chickens, okay? I'd say it's be a fourth if they're out on the pasture and you're moving them often because they'll find a lot of food from the land. Uh, what kind of supplies? Just a five-gallon uh, vacuum sealer, vacuum seal waterer. Uh, you're going to need a chicken coop. Okay, are you gonna do a chicken tractor like I've been mentioning? You're gonna have three or four hens. You're gonna have 12 hens and maybe open up the door and let them run in a, in a net. Do you have uh, maybe 24 hens? You might wanna get my chicken shawl. You might wanna build my chicken shawl mini-me. It's this thing that moves like a rickshaw. It's, it, the wheels are centered on the coop and you just move that around. It can hold up to 24 birds. Maybe you're a real crazy chicken lady and you want to move up to 36 birds. You, get the, you, you build the Chick Shaw 5.0. I see many, you, somebody here, where are they at? The original. You showed me. You built the Chick Shaw, and you move it. You like it? He likes it. Okay, so I like these mobile coops. Even in the permanent run, I don't ever clean chicken manure. All the coops, the manure can fall through the floor. And I put a mobile, mobile coop even in the permanent run because I can move that mobile coop along every two or three days, and that manure falls down on that wood chips and helps break it down into compost. And I never have to clean it out. Sometimes, if you get a female goose, she gets uh, broody-ish, and in the spring, she'll pull out all your hay from the nest box. This is why we're going to go with a male from now on. And, she'll, and it'll drop onto the floor, and it'll prevent manure from falling through. But other than that, you're good. Um, what about placement? of chicks. Where are you going to put them? Put the chickens as close to your front door as socially acceptable <laughs> to your spouse and to your neighborhood. I, why do I say that? Well, permaculture teaches us place the elements of your farm according to how many times you're going to visit them. This is a design idea. So if you're going to visit a chicken, how many times? You're going to let it out in the morning, you're going to close it up at night. That's whatever, 365 times two, that's 700 something visits a year. If the beautiful one let me, I would have the chickens right outside that front window. And I just go over to the window and get the eggs out. She's nodding her head at me. Oh. Get the chickens as close as you can and get, and get them out of the backyard. Put them in the front yard where they belong, right? Get the homesteads out of the backyard and let's get them into the front yard. Um, now, we're getting to the one to, I'm trying to leave a little bit of time for a couple of questions. Uh, one to two year mark, I would say two years more ideally. So you've bought these chicks in the spring. They're not going to lay eggs until the fall. So they're about six months old when they start laying eggs. It's, that's timing. We're getting them in the spring because that's when nature gives chicks. That's another permaculture principle. We're looking at when nature does things and mimicking that. They start coming into eggs in the fall when you really need them to come on because typically egg production falls in the fall. And we, we bring on these chickens, they're starting to lay their eggs in the fall. And then they generally lay, that first year will lay through the winter pretty strong. And then they come on a year old that next spring and they really pick up and they, they, they do that again. And then, but then what happens, they become two years old, but it's another spring, that's great. Uh, but at the end of that, the fall, they're at about the two and a half year mark. They're going to start molting. They're getting old. They tell me that a hen 
will drop egg production by a half, by 50% by the time they're two and a half years old. So that's why I say get replacement chicks at two years old, or once that hen's two years old, so that's that third spring, I guess it is. You buy those chicks in that spring, and by the time those old ladies are done in the fall, and you're about to start having to take people through the winter, they're eating more, they're slowing down, they're probably stopping their egg production. You can harvest those old ladies, and the spring chicks are just coming into fruition. They're just starting to lay you eggs. That was kind of our, that's a textbook. When you're, when you're new chicks, when you start getting those little eggs, that's time. That's, that tells you, okay, I can start butchering the old ladies. We'll let that sit for a minute. A few of you <laughs> like that joke. Okay, harvest. We're going to harvest at two and a half years. Name your chicken. People will come to me and say, well, what do I do? You know, I, I'm not going to name my chicken. Were, I'm going to call it chicken nugget or this and that. Name your chicken. It's okay. Remember what we talked about a little bit earlier? It's okay to be attached. What do I do about my children? You know, they're going to be sad. It's, o- it's okay. It's okay to be sad. What is this? We're trying to avoid all pain in our life? Pain is okay. Pain is good. We grow through pain. It's a gift to us. Okay? And it's okay to be sad. It's, and why do you name your chickens that you're going to kill and eat, you psycho? <laughs> Somebody asked me that once one, in, in one of these butchering videos I had. Uh, well, I named them because it's the ultimate respect. Do you just want to say that chicken over there? Or the, well, I might do that with chickens, but like cow or sheep, you know, it's okay. It's okay to name them and then kill them. Because when you name them and you respect them and you nurture them and even fawn over them and you're treating them well, you're, you're protecting them, you, you're making sure a predator doesn't get them, you have this wonderful attachment and relationship with them, that's okay. Because you need to feel the pain. You need, you need to be the one that feels the pain at the harvest day. And it will make you do that. If you're killing Bernice, if you're killing precious Bernice, you better believe you're going to do it right. You're going to do it quick and humane. You're going to put her upside down where it sedates her. You're going to put her in a cone where it hugs her and, and, and she's calming down. A human, you don't put us in a, con- in a cone upside down and squeeze us. That would stress us out and fight us. But we're humans. They're chickens. We kill them how they want to be killed. And we go into it with, with respect and quickness for the sake of them. And you're the one that sheds the tear that day, not them. They don't even know it's coming. Okay? And, you know, a lot of times uh, people can... Oh, okay. So once our, we had some old ladies. We didn't have time to harvest them. We didn't want stewing hens or whatever. Whatever. We put an out on Craigslist. Come get these fat old hens. I don't know if we said that, but it was certainly the vibe that the lady was feeling when she got there. She, she goes in there, and you think I'm a crazy chicken lady. She's getting down and talking to them chickens. Oh, we're going to get you out of here. Just hang on. I'm thinking, she thinks I abuse these chickens. They're like in this wonderful, like, grassed area. And, uh, but anyway, she, she goes to put them in the car. And she's talking to them and cuddling them. And I'm looking for the crate or the cardboard box. She's putting them in the back seat, front seat. You thought I was the crazy chicken lady. She's getting the seat belt out on, putting the seat belt. No, that's the, that's the lie. But that's the crazy chicken lady. But anyway, but is that right? Is that really right? The animal sanctuaries and things like that. These animals, these livestock are bred. They're not to live that long. They start getting into ailments and all kinds of problems, and before you know it, they're dying on hoof. Okay, chicken doesn't die on hoof, it die on claw. They di- they're dying live on claw in just miserable existence. Yes? Name it, why not name it Biden, he says. <laughs> Wonder where he stands. He's storming the Capitol last January. Okay. All right. We, I'll have to confess, we did name, we, okay, so guard goose, we get the uh, Roman tufted, they, and, she, and she, she's going she's gonna to be embarrassed, but she, we got that Roman tufted, it had this tuft hair, and this was way back when Trump was first going, and he kind of walked around, you know, and he kind of had that hairdo, and she's like, we got to call him Donald, 
And then everybody got mad, and so then we, then we, uh, we looked around our flock, and we said, okay, to be fair to everyone, that's Donald. We had a black Australarp. That's Obama. Then we had this, uh, uh, we had a, a female hen. Okay, that's Hillary. Okay, we had everybody. I think we even had, what's his name? Bernie. Bernie. <laughs> we even had Bernie. Okay. All right, so that's a good time. Let me, uh, you guys can maybe ask a couple questions, but I will say this. I'm going to help you build the um, structures of your homestead. The chick shaw, the chicken tractor I mentioned. I'm going to give you a free drink on, um, on this hot day. We're, re- we're now launching my next book. It's called Homestead Builds, and it's going to teach you step-by-step step how to build these homestead structures, and we're kickstarting that right now. We're launching that, and that's at homesteadbuilds.com. If you go there and back this, get the book, uh, we're going to give you a free drink over at Abundance Plus Tent. Come see us anyway. If you don't do that, come see us. We're going to be at the Abundance Plus Tent. It's just down that away. Uh, it's, ne- it's, it's next to the Kubota booth. So come see us after this. Real quick, I could probably take one and a half questions. We're out of time. Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you, he's saying, what, once you pull out, move the deep bedding to the side, you, you pull out the compost, I take the compost and put it right on the raised beds. The deep bedding just stays there, and I actually then go and add more deep bedding. It stays, and it'll be the next to break down. Yep. So I pull out compost, I add more deep bedding. Thanks, y'all. Come see us at the tent.